And we got one just coming in that would be Bennett. All right. The first item is resolution 2014-1102, Stein and Hunt, a resolution accepting a grant from MDHA to Metro acting by and through the Metropolitan Historic Commission to perform section 106 environmental review necessary for the development proposal using federal funds to determine potentially adverse effect on historic properties. We do have a letter to approve. Is there a motion? It's been moved and second. Questions? All in favor? 14-1102 is approved. The next item is 2014-749, Council Lady Moore, an ordinance to abandon portions of right-of-way and easements for alley number 442, and we do have a letter to approve. Is there a motion? It's been moved and a second. Questions? All in favor? 749 is approved. The next item is 2014-750. Council Lady Gilmore, an ordinance to abandon right of wave and easements for Jackson Court in alley number 204. Is there a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Is questions? All in favor? 750 is approved. Next item is 2014 751. Stan Hunt and others, an ordinance declaring surplus and approving the disposition of certain parcels of real real estate that we do have a letter to approve is there a second it's, it's been moved and second is there questions all in favor yes yeah i have a uh, question to the planning department on these properties right here um What's the zone of these properties and what can be built on these properties if we sell them off? How, how is that going to affect what's going on with, with a lot of these properties? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. They are all uh, zoned differently. They're they're in various different places throughout the county. But we do uh, work with the real property division of finance when these uh, are put up for surplus to make sure that everything that's being surplused is uh, consistent with the long range plan before it, before it's put up for, through this process. So um, some of these are zoned commercial, some are zoned residential, and we evaluate them to make sure that if the long range plan calls for uh, open space or a park or something like that in these particular areas, then we would recommend that they not be surplused. And um, so we have looked at these and, and agree and have recommended that they should be surplused. Okay, so none of, none of them represent green space or park space or anything like that? Um, if they do, we check with the parks department to see if they would want it as a park also. So, I mean, there's a process that these go through before they're surplus to make sure that, sure. that no department needs them. And uh, these are sent around to various different departments as well as, as planning. But but we do evaluate each one before they're put up for surplus. Thank you. Councilman Benet. But can't get it on. You Thank are. you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, mine is a follow-up question. Do we have do any efforts to reach out to nonprofits, local nonprofits, and see if they could be interested in having first dibs at these uh, properties? John, do you want to answer? Okay. 
the code specifies the process by which surplus property has to be disposed of and there there is no exception for nonprofits or anybody else it, it has to be put up for auction like everything else now nonprofits are free to bid on that but there's there's no um, procedure for setting some aside for certain agencies so is that something we have to change through legislation yes the the code would have to be amended thank you any other, any other comments all in favor? Okay, 751 is approved. The next item is 2014-752, Gilmore, Stein, and Hunt, an ordinance declaring surplus and approving the disposition of certain parcels of real, real estate property. Uh, this, is there a motion? Second. It's been moved and seconded. There are questions? All in favor? 752 is approved. Next item is 7 uh, BL 2014-753, Gilmore, Dominic, and Hunt, an ordinance to abandon water and sewer mains for properties located at 419 Jefferson Street, 1023 4th Avenue North, and 0 5th Avenue North, and 1007 4th Avenue North. Is there a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Questions? All in favor? 753 is approved. The next item is 754. Moore, Dominic, and Hunt, <clears throat> an ordinance to abandon approximately 130 linear feet of an existing 8 inch sewer main and to construct approximately 15 linear feet of 8 inch DIP water main and one fire hydrant assembly and approximately 108 linear feet of an 8 inch PVC sewer main for properties located at 336 and 356. Hill Avenue. We do have a letter to approve from Council Lady Moore. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 754 is approved. Okay, the next item is Bill 2014-755, Western Home, Dominic Hunt. This is an ordinance to abandon and accept sewer mains for property located at 1406 Harley Street. Is there a motion to approve? Okay. Second. Moved and second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 755 is approved. The next item is 756, Dominique and Hunt. An ordinance to negotiate and accept permanent and temporary easements for the Sivian Park Stormwater Improvement Project. Is there a motion to approve? Second. 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 It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> 756 finally got approved. <laughs> the next question. Uh, the next item is 2014-757. Bennett, Dominic, and Hunt, an ordinance to negotiate and accept permanent and temporary easements for the George Main Stormwater Improvement Project. We do have a letter to improve. Is there a motion? Second. It's been moved and second. Are there questions? All in favor? Aye. 757 is approved. The next item is 726. This is Councilman Holloman. An ordinance amending the zoning code pertaining to the calculation of required street setbacks for residential areas with an established developmental plan. Is there a motion? Second. It's been moved and second. Are there questions? Is there a second? Yes, a second. Any questions? Okay. Councilor Lady Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was going to ask Councilman Holloman if he could just explain his bill a little bit more. I've gotten a couple questions about it and explain what's occurring now as the law is and then what you're amending. Thank you. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There we go. Um, basically, right now, 
we have contextual setback requirements for infill development where the consistent build build to line of the existing neighborhood is up to twice whatever the default setback is in the table. So in other words, right now, if the setback in that zoning category is 20 feet from the road, um, if you are up to 40 feet, if that's where all the houses are on the street, then that's where you have to build to. That works most places. Um, where it doesn't work is areas maybe in Hillwood, Inglewood, where things are a little bit further back from the road. And what this does is apply that same contextual calculation for infill development uh, for any neighborhood where that established build to line is up to three times whatever it is in the box. In other words, if all the houses were set 50 feet back, then you'd have to build 50 feet back from the road. And, and that's, that's the main thing that this bill does. The other thing that it does is it changes um, how we look at lots um, to, to get what that average is. I expanded it from the two nearest lots to four nearest lots as long as they're up to four lots on the same block face to get you some more consistency in case one house is an anomaly or if you have a vacant lot next door that was throwing off the calculation. So this should get us uh, more consistency in having infill development happen uh, set back in context with the existing neighborhood. So that's what this bill does. Uh, there is a substitute that I think addresses some concerns mainly one of the concerns that I got was initially we just had up to, we had that you calculate off the nearest four and it was pointed out to me that sometimes there won't be four houses on a block face and you might have to go to the next block face which might be set back entirely differently so this this is is up to four houses that are on the same block face but if there are less houses on the block face then you just go with what's there on that block face and so that's a that's an adjustment that we made um, we also adjusted it um, to, to count off of single family and duplex because sometimes the existing neighborhood uh, setback is based on duplexes, not just on single family houses. So both are now contemplated. So I think you're gonna see that this adds to the consistency uh, of setback for new development in, uh, in our existing neighborhoods. Thank you. All right, I think we have Scott Davis. Oh, you can put me back in queue. I think Councilor okay. Gilmore had one more question. I did. All right. Are you giving your time there? Okay. <laughs> okay, Councilor Lady Gilmore. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Council Member Davis, for yielding your time. Um, that provided more clarity. I did have one more question. Well, two more, really. Two more. I promise only two more. So will this push most of the houses up after we... If, we, if this were to go in law up to um, the line, or would it push it more back from the setback line, away from the street? It's, it's only going to put it further back if that is where all the other houses in the neighborhood are. Um, otherwise, it has no effect. But if all the other houses in the neighborhood are set further back from the right of way than what is in the table, then that's where you have to build to. But if all the houses, for instance, in your neighborhood and my neighborhood are only 20 feet from the road, um, which is what the table also requires, this is going to have no effect at all. You're still going to build 20 feet from the road. It's only it's only to, to require you to build consistent with what is already built there if what is already built there is more than two times what this, the, the box says in terms of, in terms of setback. Um, if, if it's not more than two times, that's already the law. So this is really just an extension for a few neighborhoods where, where frankly the calculation just wasn't working out, I think as everyone had intended it to work out. And, and, I, and I'll just say that we, we talked about um, just making it context anywhere you go as opposed to three times. But when you get out into some areas like Jolton or Goodlitzville, things are set so far back off the road that you know you, you don't get any visual when you drive down the road. So it really doesn't 
it doesn't matter and you also get into more complicated topo issues on those large large lots so that's why we didn't extend it to just say everything but I think if we're at three times the setback um, that's gonna that's gonna get us um, consistency with the context in almost any established neighborhood that we have in the city okay thank you and then my last question is a couple of developers reached out and they expressed somehow with this new calculation that it was a burden on them and I don't know if you I'm still trying to understand that maybe you could just speak to that well what do you I'll, I'll say I think that there was a little bit of inaccurate information distributed at the codes department and some people that thought they were affected really weren't affected but at the same time I have had meetings in fact Councilman Hunt and I had a, a lengthy meeting today with about 25 developers uh, not just on this bill but on several bills that are going through right now and um, at, at least as to this bill I think everyone in the room was comfortable with the amendment that uh, that we proposed and so I, I think I'm guessing that most of the people that called you were part of that group today and, and I think it's fair to say that, that they are now comfortable with what's being proposed yeah, I appreciate that and if I sure. could just maybe have a, a, a list of those people or a copy I don't know if there was a sign-in or not. If, um, if I don't have a list, um, there and I was just invited not to attend. A list. I did uh, uh, collect some cards that some of them was there, and we didn't get them all, but we got a lot of them. I'll have to get in touch with uh, Matt, Matt Weathers, and he'll have them all. He's the one who put it together and brought them all to the table. Okay, thank so you. So if I can find that, I'll give them for you, but I'm not sure I can. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Council Lady Barry, then you just have. Okay, Council Lady Bennett. Go ahead. Thank you, Chairman Hunt. Can you explain the exceptions? Because there's always exceptions to everything we do. The exceptions. Yeah, like uh, there's a creek, and you. Well, okay. Yeah, so if, if that's a good example, so if if there is if there is a creek maybe that runs diagonal through. Now keep in mind, if there's a creek that that is for any distance at all, that's probably not going to be where the existing setback is for all the old homes in the neighborhood. If there if there really is a large topographic feature that's going to affect your ability to build at that point. Um, more than likely, that's not going to be where all the other old homes are built, um, particularly in the priest or stormwater days um, for things like creeks. But if, so, but I was going to say, but if it's if it's diagonal or if it's a sinkhole, I mean that's probably the best example. Um, then you can do what people do right now with with the setbacks that are in the in the box, which is you go get a, a variance from the BZA, um, and and that's still available to you. That's yeah, that's that's not changed at all. So if if there really is a topographical hardship that would prevent you from complying you can do what you do right now so sure are there any comments you got another comment Scott yes I like the thing Council, Councilman Hunt and Councilman in our Holland. 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 you're welcome <laughs> Sorry. No. You shouldn't have left my mic on, Walter. <laughs> I like to so. I like to thank Councilman Hallman and Councilman Hunt for having that meeting today and the clearing up and bringing in the um, codes department to help clear up that issue that a lot of developers and builders were having. And thank you for doing that quickly, both of you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Councilman Benet, you have another question about this? I'm on. You want to come up here? Yeah, you're on. No, you're on. You're on. Are you? You're on. That'd be more fun. Yeah, thank you. It's actually a bad night. But um, the question for you, are the developers that came today, do you think they are the same ones that have been emailing us? I do. Um, I know John Brittle, who was sort of the, the primary person that was at least organizing concerns about it, um, he and I and, and Brenda Bernard, who's in the back of the room, who's a former planning staffer who now works with John, um, we got together on Thursday. 
Thursday and then I also met with some others that were there today that I know had raised concerns to, to some people that I've talked to here in the room. Um, and that's where the, the amendment came from. So I, I, I can't tell you who you heard from because I don't know who you heard from, but um, I know that, that lots of the developers that were in the room today were ones that I had initially heard from that had concerns. And I, and I don't know of any... I can think of one developer who raised a concern to me that wasn't there, and I can't say whether he's still opposed or not, but, but my, my, my sense of it is, and I wish John Brittle could have been here, but my, my sense of it is that, that the, the people that were concerned got their concerns addressed. Well, I want to thank you because that's how we make good legislation when we get the impact from the community, so thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Good night. Council Lady Langster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanted to ask you this, 25 is a huge number and I, I, to come on such short notice, but there's still a lot of developers who want to be heard. Is there any planned meeting for future meetings um, concerning surrounding this issue? Well, you know, anything is possible. We could put together another one at some point in time. I don't think um, uh, Council Member Holloman would would object to it. I would suggest that if you get a call from anybody getting a call from the developers, please try to get their names and telephone numbers so we can get back in touch with them to make sure they are at the table in the event that we have another meeting. Okay. That sounds good. Can I, can I add one more thing, Mr. Chair? Absolutely. Um, there was also some concern that folks were submitting plans to stormwater to build in one particular location, and obviously stormwater regulation in particular is very specific as to where the structure is going to go, um, and they were, they were significantly into that process um, at the time that this bill became pending, and so to alleviate that, we uh, also in the amendment have an effective date of August first and the purpose of that is so that you if you already got pretty far into the process then you're going to be able to continue with your site plan as is under the old regulation now that'll mean that we probably have a few houses in a few neighborhoods that won't be consistent with the setback of the existing neighborhood but that seemed like a reasonable compromise so that people weren't prejudiced who had already invested quite a bit in going through the approval process thank you um Councilman Stites. You know? Try Thank that. you. I, I apologize a few minutes late, but could we, uh, could you state just maybe for the first time or second time, uh, what problem are we addressing or what the purpose for the bill? Uh, excuse me. Um, the, the problem is that in some of our n neighborhoods that, um, and I would, I would say they tend to be what I call the old septic tank neighborhoods, where the lot is a little bit bigger, it's a little set a little further back from the road. Uh, this just extends the current rule that if you tear one down and build an infill house, you have to build consistent with the setback context of the neighborhood. In other words, as, as you go down the street and the houses all line up, in all of our urban neighborhoods, um, you already have to build to that context, but that rule doesn't currently apply to homes that are set a little bit further back from the road beyond whatever the, the default table says, and so this just extends that requirement that you build with the context to those neighborhoods as well. And, that's, and the purpose is that, that as we get more infill housing, um, it, it is set back at least with the context. And I would say that there's a lot of discussion in this room about density. And, and I know that we all get concerns from people about added density. And, and a lot of times I find that it's not so much the presence of two homes instead of one or duplex instead of a single family home so much as it is that, that it looks so different on the lot than the rest of the neighborhood. And, and this will at least be sure that the, the, the setback of the house is consistent with the other houses in the area, which I think we'll find will reduce the number of concerns about some of this infill housing that's happening. Any other questions? Seeing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
Okay, 725 is approved. The next item is BL 2014 731, Blaylock, an ordinance to amend, an ordinance to amend ordinance number BL 2011-949 for the Bobby Cuty Commercial Plan Unit Development Overlay District to permit all uses of CS, excluding certain use zone CS. Is there a motion? So moved. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 731 is approved. Next item is 732, Duval, Barry, and Dominic. An ordinance to change from AR2A to CS zoning for properties located at 3515 Pin Hook Road. Is there a motion? So all in favor? Aye. 732 is approved. Next item is 2014-733. The sponsor is Hunt, an ordinance to change from CL to CS zoning for properties located at 7417 and 7421 O'Hickey Boulevard. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and second. There are questions? All in favor? Aye. 733 is approved. Next item is 734, Anthony Davis, an ordinance to change from R6 to SP zoning for properties located at 1421 Porter Road and Porter Road unnumbered to permit up to six detached dwelling units. Is there a motion? So moved. It's been moved and second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 734 is approved. The next item is 2014-735, Gilmore. An ordinance to change from ORI to SP zoning for properties located at 54, 56, 58, 60, 62, and 64 Music Square West to permit a mixture of uses and up to 230 multifamily residential units or redevelopment under the ORI-A zoning district. Is there a motion? So moved. It's been moved and second. Are there questions? All in favor? Aye. 735 is approved. Next item is 736, Blaylock. An ordinance to change from R10 to RS10 zoning for various property east of Nolensville Pike. Is, are there, is there a motion? Where's Blaylock? Wait a minute. Council Lady Blaylock? Roll it to the hill. We'll move on. The find that. Okay, the next item is 2014-737, uh, Western Home and Anthony Davis. In order to make applicable the provisions of Lachlan Spring East End Neighborhood Conservation Overlay District to various properties located south of Eastland Avenue. Is, are there a motion? Is there a motion? Second. It's been moved and second. Uh, are there questions? All in favor? Aye. 737 is approved. The next item is 738, Scott Davis. An ordinance to change from RS5 to SP zoning for properties located at 612 North 2nd Street to permit single family or detached two family units. Is there a motion? Second. It has been moved and second. Are there questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 738 is approved. 739. Hunt, an ordinance amending the zoning code pertaining to personal instructions. Is there a motion? Okay. It's been moved and second. There are questions. All in favor? Aye. 739 is approved. The next item is 740. Johnson. Where did she go? Karen Johnson. Oh. In order to amend the zoning code to create and define auction houses, flea market, beer and cigarette markets, and grocery store as new land uses. Is, are the, is there a motion? Second. Second. We move the second. Are there questions? All in favor? Aye. Seven. Okay. Sorry. 
Council Lady Adams. Thank you. I just would like to ask uh, Council Lady Johnson if she could just explain what this does. Just so I'll know. Oh, yeah. Um, who's this in your honor? Messing me up here. Go John, John Cooper, can you help me out with that? It's just basically to um, bring out uh, the different designations under the retail code so that if you should have a bill where um, a specific retail category can be pulled out relative to a neighborhood, you can do that. Right now, they're all lumped together. Um, so if you go before the Planning Commission and you have a unique situation with a community where a particular type of retail does not fit within that community, you cannot pull it out currently um, because retail is all lumped in together. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 740 is approved. And then we'll go back to Bill 735. I'm sorry, Bill 736. An ordinance to change from R10 to R10 zoning for various properties east of Nolensville Pike. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 736 is approved. And that ends our agenda for the day. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Been mighty quiet today. <laughs> <laughs>